You know, in the media business in this town, the plane dealer where I work, there are tons of people that are from here and went to other jobs and came back to Cleveland. It seems like it really is easy pickings to talk about people that are really good in, in other cities but are originally from here. That's your ace in the hole. Are you finding, David, that when you're recruiting folks, one of the sales points is that they are from here? Oh, absolutely. And it's definitely one of our focuses. Um, not only for the reason I mentioned earlier about people just generally going back to where they're from, but also because, you know, it's, it's like tennis. You can't win just by breaking the other person's serve. You've got to hold serve. And every talented person with local roots that we lose over a lifetime, um, we've, we've lost our serve there, right? And if you're only breaking serve, you're not going to ever be able to grow. And that's what our focus is on growing. And I think, any, I think you, we're only looking at a piece of the puzzle today, it's a package, and you have to address the whole package. And my job's a lot easier because I'm just talking about it with individuals for the most part, or small groups of people. Um, looking at this and working from it from a global perspective like Dan does and others do is, is a much more challenging process. You know, it's very easy to focus on an individual and, and tell them why Cleveland should be uh, in, their, in their future. Um, so. Next question, please. Uh, I wanted to ask the panel, uh, over the last 10 years, uh, there's been a, kind of a, a, at least a, an understanding that uh, the matrix has changed, changed in terms of how businesses make decisions to locate. Uh, maybe it was the work of Richard Florida and when he started talking about creative class a number of years ago. And uh, uh, I go back to the TV series now, Mad Men, uh, which uh, is back in the 50s, and there was a very hierarchical approach to decision making, and supposedly now that that's changing. The young professionals, the, the employees, in some ways are dictating uh, decisions, potentially where companies uh, will move to or form or whatever. Have you found, has the panel found evidence of that, or is that simply uh, uh, um, uh, an uncollaborative, uh, corroborated myth that, that we work within these days. Uh, Chris Sepper, uh, in the medical field, mm -hmm. you've obviously followed these issues. What, do you find that there's a, a trend? I think, there's a, I think the trend um, that's changing where people locate, and probably even more to the point of developing and attracting, is the economics of how companies grow, how they're funded. Um, uh, money, I think money drives everything now, particularly now as venture capital investment has dropped dramatically. Companies that are startups, and there's a lot more entrepreneurial startups, small startups that are out there, um, you know, they follow money. If you will invest, uh, we had, there's a company that has moved to Cleveland from Louisiana and it took $100,000. Five years ago, that would be unheard of. You would, it, would, it would be a seven-figure investment that would require a company to move. That didn't happen. They got a, 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 a grant from Lorraine County Innovation Fund and they're up here. Um, so money matters. The challenge really in attracting and keeping um, companies now and finding the right companies to keep um, is the fact that most companies when they grow to a certain size are acquired, particularly in the medical industry. Um, pharmaceutical companies, major pharmaceutical companies don't do their own research and development. They let the startups do it and then they buy the startups. Um, that is, I think that is really going to be a challenge for cities and like Cleveland and states like Ohio where you're seeing minimal job creation despite uh, in these kind of scenarios. So when I talk about some of the dynamics that's changing, I think it's the way companies are invested in, um, how quickly and rapidly and easily they will move for a very small amount of money, and then in turn, how difficult it will be to grow a company organically and keep it in an environment where you don't see IPOs as much anymore, or you don't see a company flourishing even into a, you know, into a, not a Merck, but even an, you know, an Atherosis and Invicare size company, that's going to be a real challenge um, in fostering a, a downtown that's going to be vibrant with big companies. Dan? Uh, uh, just to add, I, uh, I think that's right on, on target. I think the workforce has always been a critical issue in a company as it is evaluating where it wants to locate it. I think it's gotten increasingly important and uh, the companies look both at the quantity and quality of the workforce that's available to them, the, the size of the age 25 to 44 cohort that they would be drawing their workers from is important to big companies who are looking to relocate. I wish we had this challenge more often. But it's also, uh, and this is an issue for Cleveland, they look at the quality and a lot of times that gets down to the educational attainment levels of where we, we have a lot of work to do in this region also in trying to uh, upgrade the, the general skill level and educational attainment. We've got just a few minutes left. We'll take one more question. 
Oh, cool. Um, okay, as someone who works and hangs out downtown but lives in Bay Village, um, I actually think that the ease of commute to and from even the furthest suburbs um, has a negative impact on downtown development. And if you look at, you know, Chicago and Boston, you have couples in their 50s living downtown because it's too much of a hassle to live in the suburbs. What can Cleveland do besides, you know, artificially making bad traffic uh, <laughs> to help develop downtown and get people to stay downtown past these transient 20 years? Right. I, I think our problem here is actually what I th think is a benefit, which is that we have a rush minute in, in Cleveland and not, a, and not really a rush hour. Um, and, and that's been a, a debate really about the size of our, our roadways, the idea of, uh, of, of expanding them and making it easier to get in and out of town. Have we made a mistake in doing that, David? I don't think so. Um, I think different people want different things. We as a firm certainly, and we sell it to, the, to those people, the neighborhoods in Cleveland and how easy it is to have a large house. Um, you know, if you have a good job and you're, you're 15 minutes away from downtown and various different types of neighborhoods that are wonderful and you have a lot of living space, you can even go a little bit further out, you know, 30 or 45 minutes out or not even that far and have acres. You know, you can, ha you can, you can, you can have as, you can fit your lifestyle to Cleveland. What we're missing, and I think where your question goes to, and it's a good point, is getting the type of person who prefers to live a New York City style life, but not in New York City, not at that scale. Or, you know, even just a downtown, you know, walk to work every day. I, I walk to work every day when it's not awful outside, and even some of those days. Um, and I like being able to walk to, you know, to a grocery store and pick up a few things. And, and just that, that kind of, like, um, more D.C.-ish lifestyle. We're not attracting those people. Um, and that's what downtown Cleveland has to focus on improving is that those people see downtown Cleveland as a viable option and come here in the first place. You know, the type of person who wants a house or thinks they want a house or isn't sure and they're making a, a decision based on that reason is always going to be just temporarily downtown. And that's fine. But we need to, to establish the downtown Cleveland's brand and work to establish it um, as a place where you can spend a life. I, I know quite a few people that I work with, especially some of the older um, uh, excuse me, paralegals and assistants who are, you know, whose, whose children have left and they're thinking, hey, it would be nice to, to sell our house and buy a condo downtown, but, you know, is it safe, David? Can I run in this neighborhood? What, you know, what, where do I go for, go for groceries? What, what about this? What about that? And people just don't have the knowledge. So knowledge will help, but also just attracting the type of person who wants to live that kind of lifestyle, I think. This is a discussion that I think all of us continue continue to have, and, and I thank you to uh, the, the new leaders here at uh, the City Club for having us this, uh, this uh, afternoon. Eric? Thanks, Michael. Today at the City Club, we've been listening to a new leaders program featuring Daniel Berry, David DeBoard, Chris Sieper, and moderated by Michael McIntyre. Thank you, speakers. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This program is now adjourned.